A first listen of Gimme Shelter by the Rolling Stones. So this song comes off the band's 10th studio album called Let It Bleed. It is actually a really crucial point in the band's history where the original member Brian Jones is kicked out of the band and replaced by a guy called Mick Taylor. However, Mick doesn't actually feature in this song. Um, now, what I've learned about the Rolling Stones is that they are considered to be the quintessential rock and roll band. They kind of define what it means to be rock and roll. And this combination of musicians with the addition of Mick Taylor and the four other guys who are previously in it, um, Jagger, Richards, um, Charlie Watts and Bill Weinman are the essential uh combination where they have their best output during these years and i know that there's a lot of debate between beatles fans and uh, rolling stones fans about who is the greatest rock and roll band of all time so i guess i'll be adding my two cents to it with this reaction and following reactions about which songs i enjoy more between the two of them um other than that i should say that apparently 95 percent of you guys are actually not subscribed to the channel so if you do have a second hit the subscribe button it really does help the channel grow with all that being said, let's get into the music. Okay, here we go. Oh, shit. Okay, I usually give super initial takes. Wow, what a guitar riff lead vocal combi lead guitar combination. Um, holy crap. I know, I know that um, most of the output of the band comes from Keith Richards' guitar. I mean, he often does both rhythm guitar and the lead guitar playing on uh, the majority of their songs, which is incredible that just one guy has come up with all this stuff like... The fact that that was in his head, in someone's head even, and they're able to express it through a guitar is uh, is really quite amazing to me. Um, now, sort of the vibe that's being created by all the music going on, the kind of um, backing vocals that are part of it as well, is kind of giving this sense of like impending doom almost, like something uh, cataclysmic is coming, you know? Um, Really cool vibe, man. Really cool vibe. Let's let's back this up a little bit. Whoa, okay, for a song that is like uh, essentially talking about like, um, you know, something horrible coming, you know, war, loss, it's funky as hell, man. Um, what a groove. It kind of reminds me of that um, scene in, I think it was the Matrix Revolution where like the final battle of like humanity is about to happen. And what do they do? They have a giant rave to kind of like, hey man, look, we might all die tomorrow. Fuck it, we might as well dance, you know? It kind of reminds me of that. It's like the subject matter is is dread, but let's have a good time while uh, while we're still here. Um, yeah, if I get into the lyrics a little bit, it, it, it seems like um, he says a storm is coming, right? Something terrible is coming, but I don't think he necessarily just means, um, you know, something of a natural disaster. It seems more to do with war. You know, the next bit is about war. So he used the idea of storm as sort of a metaphor for, you know, just whatever bad's coming his way. Um, again, the writing's not 
crazy complex, but it's all feeling and vibe. And the way the music and the vocals are combining together, there seems to be also a woman who's singing with him. I guess that's who Mary Mary Clayton is. She has a really soulful voice, which um, kind of works weirdly well with Mick Jagger's kind of raspiness. Um, I don't know how that how they thought that would work, but it's combining really, really well. Um, great vibe so far. Let me back it up a little bit. Ooh, listen to that. Okay, I'm going to pause it just before we get into the next section of the music. Wow, there's actually so much going on in the background, man. So firstly, the guitar right in the beginning of the musical break was tuned to sound really different. Um, I spoke earlier about Led Zeppelin's track where they were playing harmonica. And apparently it was run through a guitar amp, which made this really cool sound going through it. It's like a similar thing going on here where like I've not heard this kind of um guitar beforehand um and then you've got sort of piano being played in the background too like um really brilliantly like almost jazz jazz piano being played okay let's take this back a little bit there we go hey 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 whoa Let me back that up again. This, that was like a scream from the gut. Okay, I'm going to pause it there just for that bridge from Mary Clayton. Whoa, she sort of, um, she just uh, sort of has me dumbfounded there. Uh, she switched up the lyrics. So all this time it was war children. Yeah, it's just a shot away. This time she switched it up to rape murder is just a shot away. Um, and the way she delivers it there, like one of the times, like it felt, I felt like her voice almost broke while she was singing it. Like she was... Again, she's singing it from her gut that time, man. Um, yeah, it's like she, it's like she almost lost her voice on that on that last run that she did. Um, incredible, incredible vocals there, man. Let's go back this up.
fucking song. Um, again, the ending there to choose to switch up once again. This whole time it's been dread, right? But in the final run, in the final outro first, what does he switch it up to? I'll tell you, love, sister, is just a kiss away. So we have an option here. Yes, we can sort of sing about the doom. It is coming, but we also have the chance to sort of um, mend things. Um, great combination between um, Mick and Mary Clayton. I've never heard... Uh, I've heard little bits and pieces of Mick singing. Um, he has such a unique voice. It's very sort of raspy, like... Um, he would have been a young man during this time, but he certainly sounds a lot older the way he sings. Um, again, so much, so much going on in the background. Um, there's pianos, a great bass line. The drums really fit this track. It's It wasn't like Led Zeppelin's drumming, which was like just kind of blasting through the uh, the music. It was much more subtle you know it played a more of a supporting role during the whole song but was great um again some people might miss it if you don't pay attention but there's great piano playing being done throughout the whole thing too um is this a common thing in uh, rolling stones music where they get additional musicians to come and join them because i think mick does a great great job but mary might be the star of the show i mean that last verse where she kind of blew her vocals out when she was singing was incredible um and again if i was to speak about the context of the of the track it's released in 1969 i mean that's really the height of the vietnam war tensions going on and uh, a lot of young people which would have been mick jagger's you know generation felt a real strong way about the the fighting that was going on that it was wrong and perhaps this is a track a anti-war song sort of suggesting what is the outcome of you know so much war and death brilliant track man just a, a vibe that was set there if i gave a recommendation in my last uh, reaction that i did a hip-hop recommendation for any rock fans who have not checked out too much hip-hop music if i was to give a track with a similar vibe to this that i really recommend you guys go listen to it'd be the art of storytelling part two now it is a duo song which was the first part, the art of storytelling part one, um, sort of as a lead into the second part. But it's the second part that really reminds me of this song. It takes part on in the final day of sort of Earth, where a cataclysmic event is happening with some brilliant, brilliant lyrics, especially from Andre 3000. I would really sit there and have the lyrics up and try and go through it yourselves. Um, wow. I mean, what do you say to that? I mean, it's kind of left me stunned. Um brilliant every part of it was great this is like musicianship at its height with everyone doing their part to add to the vibes of the song if you were to ask me so far who i enjoyed more listen i've only listened to two beatles songs and one uh, rolling stone song so far but personally in terms of the music that i enjoy more this speaks to me more um the day in the life of was um a slower track uh less hard hitting in terms of musicality and um blackbird was acoustic and uh this just is more my vibe so maybe uh some people can recommend me songs that uh I, where i can go from now basically um but at the moment it's a little edge to the rolling stones um yeah other than that two thumbs up from me man this was another 10